So now that you've got these extruded pieces, what are you going to do with them? So uh, there, are, there are lots of options, and I'm intentionally leaving the assignment a little bit open for you guys, but a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, you can cut these apart, obviously. You can use separate pieces like this. I could roll a slab and make a bottom for this piece and have kind of a very skinny mug. Um, if you don't like the surface of these pieces, you can use a rib, either uh, one of those silicon red ribs or the metal rib that comes in the throwing kit. Um, and you can smooth these and make them sort of a nicer surface to start with. From here, you can facet and carve and all of those sorts of things that we uh, talk about in other videos. Um, but a couple of things specifically for the extruder that you might not always think about um, is you don't have to be stuck with this kind of uh, diameter and shape. The, the tubes tend to come out on their own kind of at an angle sometimes. Um, but you can uh, sort of encourage some of that. Uh, if you want to change the shape, you can go ahead and give yourself a, what do you call that, like a, a so there's, a, there's a sewing term for it. You can cut out a little triangle and uh, make sort of a dart that either gets narrower or larger. So I've cut out a triangle out of this bottom section and uh, removed clay. If I go ahead and score and slip this, score it up. This is actually pretty wet clay, so I could probably get away with not using slip on this one. And it's pretty thick. But I can go ahead and press those parts together. If I use my rib, I can compress that seam and make it a little bit stronger. But now I've got a shape that has kind of a narrowing and a curve to it. I've got this piece left over. And if I want to score and slip this section as well, I've got a little bit of slip over here. Just don't wear slip. Add it in to my sides so I got a nice good stick. And then I can actually add this little triangle back into the clay. Squish those sides together. I'm squishing from the inside and the outside. I'm going to use a rib to smooth that surface on the outside. And now I've got a piece that now I've got a piece that gets bigger and gets smaller. I'm going to go ahead and give myself another cut over here, and I'm going to start to actually just pinch the walls. My clay is pretty thick here in this particular extrusion. If you want to control the thickness of your extrusion, you can use different combination of dies. But now that I've got this piece extruded, I could go ahead and split these sections like that. Um, and then I've, I could, you know, add something like this other part that I've got over here. Keep sculpting. There's a lot of changes you can make in what you start with. It doesn't have to stay put. And of course, you can add sections together. You can slice. The, there's no. You have a tube, but there's no reason that that has to be used exactly like a tube. Maybe you want to use short little discs, and you want to start to build in this sort of shape. Score and slip anytime you attach pieces together. But maybe you're making something a little bit more abstract. So I'm kind of goofing around here, moving quickly because. You guys are going to be in charge of the inspiration and what you're showing. But this, just as an example, this is a piece I have in the studio that was extruded. Now, obviously, not all of it was extruded. This piece was, was built out of uh, pinch and, and pieces of slab. But from here down, that was extruded. I used a hollow die. This piece is hollow. I split it, just like I did with this one here. And then I put these pieces together. Now, it's... If you know what the extruder looks like, you might be able to recognize the extruder, but I've changed it quite a bit from that original tube that came out of there. And you guys can change your pieces quite a bit as well. We don't have to recognize the extruder. The extruder has to be the tool that you're using.